today, folks, today, today, or rather, on October 1st, a lot of the great experiments that were done under the pandemic, the, the pandemic times, right? The time of COVID, they are expiring. The good thing about it is that we proved that it worked. Child care worked. The, the, the working supply expanded. So our productivity expanded as more workers, more efficient workers were out there. You know, we were supposed to be in a recession. We didn't get into a recession for several reasons. Keynesian plus MMT works. We went ahead and we gave money to parents so they could, or to institutions so their kids could go and get childcare at a preferred rate, at an affordable rate, which allowed them to go to work and be a part of the economy. They paid more taxes, more money circulated, more money circulated. It kept the, the, the economy inflated. We gave we gave subsidies to poor parents, which took a lot of kids out of poverty. But taking them out of poverty meant those parents were out there buying products, doing things, right? Economy going up. And then student loans were put on pause with the expectation that they would be forgiven, right? What that meant is that instead of having to give your money to bankers for loans that they didn't inherently give, they're just administering these loans for the government, right? Instead of taking those billions of dollars every month out of the economy, people use that money to buy homes, cars, and a whole lot of things because, again, the, that, that debt that they acquired by many times fraudulent means, or, or not fraudulent is the word I should use is uh, um, that they didn't do, that they fooled people into these debts. The government was saying, you know, we need to start at ground zero. All that money lends itself back into the economy. In other words, it wasn't just going to rich bankers back or it wasn't just going back into, into not doing anything. The money kept on working. Well, three programs expired. The student loan, uh, the student loan uh, break that people get from paying on their student loans, it's, not, it's back in action. Uh, child care is back as well as subsidies. Let's listen to this report and then we'll take it on the other side because I love the way he explained it. The end of three major COVID era safety net programs that have been helping tens of millions of Americans for the last years plus. Joining now the big board, NBC News correspondent Noah Pransky. Noah, so let's talk about these government programs. They are expiring tomorrow. What does this mean in terms of changes for Americans who are depending on them to get by? And I guess the big question is, could they be resurrected eventually? So there are alternatives, but the thing we should reiterate here is this is irrespective of what's happening in the Capitol right now. These were already scheduled years earlier to expire on October 1st. Three of the big safety net programs expiring this weekend, the student loan pause you've probably heard about, mm -hmm. but also child care subsidies and food assistance. Dive into these one by one here. The student loan pause affecting over 40 million Americans. Since March 2020, those payments have been on pause, no interest accumulating until only in the last month. Point out here, Donald Trump was the one who first instituted this. So three and a half years of subsidies, $200 billion invested by the government into this. Some say that has helped stabilize the economy and uh, inject consumer spending. The other side of that, of course, some economists believe that has contributed to inflation. The Biden administration wants you to know, though, if you're a student loan borrower, there is a new program introduced in January called the SAVE program. It is income driven. If you are low income, you may not have to make any payments at all, including as this restarts. However, it based on your income, 4 million people have signed up. But you can see that is far from the 40 plus million who might be eligible. Biden administration wants to get the word out about that. The other big one here, the child care cliff. For two and a half years since the Biden administration passed this bill with Democrats in early 2021, there have been subsidies going into communities to support child care so parents could get back into the workplace. But with this expiring, three million kids could lose access to that care in the top state, the top economy here that could be impacted, according to the Progressive Century Foundation, Texas. It doesn't have the same state safety nets as other big states like New York or California. 300 plus thousand kids could lose care 
starting this week, and 70,000 childcare programs across the country could close. One poll last year found that 43% of programs say you would have no choice when these subsidies end but to raise prices on parents. And the other one here, food assistance, mm. formerly known as food stamps, now called SNAP. These changes go into effect this week and it will restart work requirements that were on pause, always designed to be a temporary pause, but those go back into place. And the thing that's new here is that 50 plus, there will be new restrictions on some recipients over the age of 50. Previously, it was only up to the age of 49. But one of the stipulations that was agreed upon between House, Senate, and the White House to keep the government open with the debt limit earlier this year was to new add new requirements for 50 to 54 years old. Those will begin phasing in immediately this weekend. So for some people, they will face new requirements they hadn't seen before. All told, maybe up to a million people could lose food assistance starting October 1st. Add it all up, 44 million, 47 million, 48 million people across America will see these changes. In addition to what's happening with the shutdown, the silver lining potentially, according to some economists, pulling some of this money and these subsidies out of the economy might help with the ongoing inflation problem. Yeah. I want you guys to notice something that this guy said, and, and it's really very evil, that if you have an economic system that says the following, put in some of your residents in pain. Some economists believe that by inflicting this pain on people, it will reduce inflation rates. And why will it reduce inflation rates? Because it'll reduce demand. And if you reduce demand, the corporate thugs will start to say, oh, we better lower our prices so we can get rid of this inventory. An evil economic system. It's as opposed to saying, oh, uh, these guys should not be getting these windfall profits from the misery of others. But anyway, another thing that's quite obvious with what we just saw here. Think about it. You know, New York and California, the states that that conservatives like to malign, those people in those states won't do as badly as Texas. We are losing over 300,000 kids that are going to be left without child care. Over 300,000 kids. So much for family values. So much for family values. That is how I find, that is how, uh, you know, you think about it. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.